got Big Golem and Small Golem together, I can summon Medium Piece Golem as well!
hello and I hope you enjoyed those little replays. So, uh, yeah, he's going to Mad Advance Beta. It's basically another rock good stuff deck, but this is pure rock. As the god intended, every rock is earth attribute, not some fire, water, wind, or whatever. Everything is fucking earth. Okay. I'm um, over the very cringy racist jokes. Anyway, we're playing the, I think, standard Emancipator Package, Triple Researcher, Triple Seeker, Triple Analyzer, and of course, Signs. We're not playing anything more because those cards lock us into Emancipator Monsters and we don't want those. After that, we have the very intriguing Peace Golem Package with triple big piece golem, triple medium piece golem, and triple small piece golem. So the thing about piece golem is that if you have a big piece golem on the field and you summon either the small piece golem or the medium piece golem, you're able to summon the other one. So if you summon small piece golem, you get the medium. If you get the medium, you summon small. And that triggers on every summon. Normal summon, special summon, flip summon, whatever. So that effect will always trigger, it's also not once per turn. The effect of the monster summoned by this effect is negated though, because that would just be utterly insane. But, if you have a big peace golem, and you summon any of the Emancipator monsters, and you get either medium or small beast golem, you end on a mud ma on an Emancipator tuner, big piece golem, medium piece golem, and small piece golem, giving you access to a variety of synchro monsters, spawning from level five all the way to level seven, or from seven to nine, depending on which Emancipator synchro you have on the field. And there are at least a few very interesting ones in that package. But more on that a bit later. We're also playing Triple Doki Doki. That is important since if we have Doki Doki, we can just pitch a Doki Doki to summon Big, big Peace Golem and go with the Emancipator combo from there. That's basically what this card is here for. Nothing more, nothing less. Metal Falls Fusion is a very interesting choice. This is a discard folder for a card in our extra deck, which we're going to touch upon a bit later. Next we have Pot of Desires and Pot of Prosperity, so we can get to our hands quicker, just, you know, the consistency. We have a reasoning here, because we're playing monsters from level 2, two till 5. So a large variety of levels, giving us a good amount of uh, playability. Called by the grave because we f hate being ashed. Like seriously, that's very sad if you get ashed. Monster Reborn, because it's Monster Reborn. And we have our hand traps, standard ash and infant impermanence. We're also playing the code breaker packet because we fucking can. Next is the extra deck. We're playing one Borrow Load Savage Dragon because it's a negation. Naturia Landois. So about this guy. About this turtle. It's a level 7, Earth Rock Synchro Monster that requires a Earth Tuner and one or more non-Earth Tuners. So basically any combination of our monsters in the main deck that facilitate level 7. Also, while it's face up on the field, you can send a spell card from your hand to the graveyard and negate an opponent's monster effect. Of course, an activated monster effect. That's why we're playing Metal Foes Fusion, or as a discard photo for Landois. This not only gives us discard photo and activation condition for Landois' effect, 
and it can also recurse itself, giving us additional draw, so basically it's just a free negation. However, if you notice, Landois doesn't say once per turn. So as long as we have spells in our hand, we can negate monster effects, activated anywhere on the field. Nibiru negated, Gamma negated, Ash negated, anything else negated. We're only playing one though, since there aren't many combinations in the deck that can make this little guy. So I decided to play him at one. We're playing double Naturia Barkion. And I think this is one of those that people might know better than Landois. It's a level 6, uh, the same materials, one Earth Tuner and one or more non Earth Tuners. And during either player's turn, when a trap card is activated, you can banish two cards from the graveyard, negate that activation, and destroy the trap card. Also, this card must be faced up on the field. So, Barkion is here to provide, of course, trap protection. From cards like Infinite Impermanence. What else can come to my mind? Any of... Evenly matched. Etc. Any card that can be activated from the hand and its trap card can be negated by Barkion. So I am very happy with this. Uh, we're playing two because most of the time one of those Barkions is a fuel for that prosperity. That's why we're playing two. So we can just use one to get prosperity and have the other to summon. Next is the Naturia Synchro Monster that most people are familiar with, Naturia Beast. As everyone, every other Naturia Synchro Monster, it requires an Earth Tuner and non Earth Tuner, and it can negate spells by sending two cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard. It's very easy to summon here. We have Small Piece Golem, Researcher, Seeker. It's very easy to bring out Naturia Beast. And as with Barkin, we're playing two, so one can be used as fuel for prosperity. Next is our Xyz monsters. One Gallant Granite. And one Dugaris. If anything, if you ever want to make those, uh, Medium Piece Golem and Analyzer are your materials. However, most of the time, those two are materials for... Not materials, are a cost for prosperity. They have their usage of Gallant Granite either summoning a monster from the grave, which is not that useful, because it summons face down, and we don't want those. But it can add either one of the uh, Emancipator monsters or a Peace Golem uh, that we need. Desperately. Dugaris is here because it can draw, summon, etc. It's a utility card. Next we have our links, and we are starting with the low link ones. Hockey Fibrax is here because we have a lot of tuners. Also the Earth Charmer Immovable is here because everything is Earth. That's a link too. We have the Codebreaker package with Swordsman and Berserker. And we also have Draco Masters of the Tenny, which are usually put in with the Codebreaker package. Since from Haki Fibrax, if we summon a Tuner monster, we can just use it to summon Draco Masters of the Tenny. And if we have two more monsters, we can go into the Codebreaker package. And the Codebreaker package ends on Goki the Power Load Ogre and Appaloosa. This deck is very interesting in what it can do, but it's not that consistent. The fact that you have to get the big piece going on the field is rendering it usage extremely, 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 yes. 
Also, the fact that you cannot summon a big piece golem from your hand on the first turn of the duel is very bad. And you can normal summon it, but only if uh, the opponent controls a monster and you don't. And that's why Doki Doki is here, to pitch that big piece golem to summon one from the deck. However, if it happens, you will still need Researcher. Because Researcher is the only one of the other Emancipator monsters can be summoned if you control a rock. Analyzer requires the opponent to control a monster. And Seeker requires an Adam Emancipator. So this is basically a three card combo of Doki Doki, Big Peace Golem and Researcher. And if Researcher is able to hit either Medium or Small Peace Golem, then we can go from there. This deck has, has potential, especially the medium and small piece golems because there aren't ones per turn and they can just swarm the field like there's no tomorrow. I was thinking about playing Saryuja here, but I just didn't find the space for it. Maybe next time. Anyway, if you liked this video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next one. To close me out, peace!